have you ever wanted to unravel the mysteries of the vast universe? Because I have a story to tell you. The story of Swayam, a PICO satellite developed by undergraduate students of College of Engineering, Pune. A story that will inspire you to follow your innermost desires, even if it means taking the path filled with challenges. I am Sendil Kumar, former senior member, Swayam Satellite Team. It all began in 2008, when an undergraduate civil engineer, Abhishek Bhaviskar, was consulted by his friend to build a ground station to track satellites. This got him thinking, while building a ground station, can we at least consider the idea of building a student satellite? Along with a few members who fascinated the stars and the celestial objects in the sky, he approached the college director with a proposal to build a student satellite. None of the members had the knowledge to build a satellite. Our college does not even have an aerospace department. Despite these shortcomings, our director noticed the power of our idea. He accepted our proposal and kick-started our journey. But at the outset, we were not sure how far the destination was or how difficult our journey would be. More importantly, were we even ready for such an adventure? Amidst these doubts, we started studying research papers and scholarly articles to understand how other student satellite missions had begun their efforts. Within months, we were interacting with scientists, professors, and satellite development teams across the country. Soon we decided that we would build a satellite through which ground stations around the globe could communicate using digital communication, the language of ones and zeros. This became our satellite payload, the purpose of the satellite in space, to serve ground stations around the globe to communicate using digital communication. The satellite we set out making would have a mass less than one kilogram and a size approximately that of a 10 centimeter cube. Such a satellite is called as 1U in CubeSat standards. The small dimensions of the satellite meant lower power and lesser mass. One of the critical functions of the satellite is to stabilize the satellite and orient the antenna such that favorable communication between the ground stations on the Earth and the satellite could be established. Some of the commonly used methods to stabilize the satellite makes use of devices like magnetorkers or thrusters where a large amount of power is spent in stabilizing the satellite. Owing to the power and mass constraints, we could not afford these methods in our satellite. As they say, innovation is shaped by constraints. The idea of passive stabilization then dawned upon us. We are all aware of the age-old principle that a freely suspended magnet would align itself along the Earth's magnetic field. We realized we could use the same principle to stabilize our satellite too. When a permanent magnet is placed strategically within the satellite along with hysteresis materials, favorable communication between the ground stations and the satellite could be established. No energy is lost in this process. This is called passive magnetic attitude control system. This was never tried in an Indian satellite before. So we decided to take it up as our scientific objective to demonstrate the principle of passive stabilization. After finalizing our scientific objective, we organized our team into five subsystems to facilitate parallel development separated by well-defined interfaces. The five subsystems that we came up with were, firstly, the attitude control system that would stabilize the satellite in space. Next, the second subsystem was that of the communication subsystem, which would devise a bi-directional communication link between the ground stations and the satellite. The onboard computer subsystem was the brain of the satellite. It would interact with sensors, storage devices, and enable autonomous operation of the satellite in space. The next subsystem was that of the power subsystem. It would harness the solar energy and make it available to the other electrical systems in the satellite. The last subsystem was the structure subsystem that would build the entire satellite structure and ensure that the temperature is within permissible limits. Imagine yourself shivering in the frigid areas of Antarctica, and suddenly you were moved to the hottest sands of Sahara. 
This was the kind of environment our satellite was going to experience in space. In the worst case, the temperature would move from minus 45 degrees Celsius to plus 50 degrees Celsius within a couple of hours. The radiation in the space environment could create havoc on our digital hardware. Failures and faults could have occurred at multiple levels of our satellite's operation. We had to find ways to counter the failures and the faults that could arise in the space environment. So we carefully chose design principles that would help us do that. The design principles that we came up with were, falsely, fault tolerance. That is, in case a system uh, ha happened to go into a fault, then it would tolerate or bear with those faults by itself. A red dot in the picture indicates a faulty system, and we would design systems that would tolerate faults within them. The next design principle was fault isolation. That is, in case a system runs into a fault, the faulty system would be isolated such that the other systems are safeguarded. The final principle was that of redundancy. That is, in case a system fails altogether, we would have an alternate system that would take on the functioning of the failed system. We would carry out extensive reviews and discussions to ensure that we've not lost out on some better approaches to design. When you set out building a satellite, the term day-to-day -day challenges becomes more of an inside joke. Take, for instance, a bug in the operating system code, which took endless days to discover and endless nights to fix. Or even the months of designing, testing, and debugging the radio frequency circuits to enable satellite communication. Or even receiving a signal at the ground station for the first time. This eventually took us to a journey that resulted in one of the country's best amateur ground stations. So the challenges that we would pursue would persist for days until we got the better of them. By the mid of year 2015, with a robust design, skillful assembly, and exhaustive testing, the final flight model of the Swayam satellite was ready. And on the 22nd of June, 2016, it took off in space with ISRO's PSLV C-34. Let's witness this event as it unfolded. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero, plus one, plus two, PS1 plus three, and grounded plus step four, signited. plus five, majestic lift off, off. majestic lift off, off. with the core and post of the signal. अपना स्थल छोड़ा और इस समय वाहन अपने मार्ग पर जाते हुए और आप अपने स्क्रीन पर देख रहे हैं कितने भव्य रूप से ये वाहन अपने पुनर्निर्धारित मार्ग So this was the majestic lift off of ISRO's PSLV C34 that carried the Swayam satellite and within minutes after this launch we witnessed this Satya Bhama and Swayam satellites are separated and placed in the orbit. Satya Bhama satellite and Swayam satellite are separated and injected into orbit. Satya Bhama satellite. The Swayam satellite was finally separated from the launch vehicle. It became the country's first passively stabilized satellite and the smallest Indian satellite along with Studsat. Over the course of Swayam satellite development, 176 students have contributed towards its design and construction. 176, a number completely unheard of in context of student satellite missions, where it's a rarity to find a positive number in the hundredths place. They say too many cooks would spoil the broth. I'd say it depends on who's cooking. These cooks, I mean the students, were never offered academic credits for their contribution. But the passion to reach out to the space enabled them to balance academics, conduct research, and build satellites. The team would share its research outcomes and discoveries through various international conferences and also help satellite development initiatives across the country. We believe through these activities, we are contributing as students to the growth of our country. In fact, our Prime Minister, the Prime Minister of India, 
took note of it and acknowledged us by meeting us personally and congratulating us. We are in a world where countries and businesses are struggling with continuity and consistency amidst change of leadership. Consider then that the Swayam Satellite Project has continued for over eight years without any break of efforts for over eight batches of students. How could a student group like us ensure continuity in our efforts in this project? I believe it is the scrupulous documentation and the knowledge transfer process that ensured continuity of our efforts. Every system designed, every alternative considered, every experiment performed, and every bug discovered would get documented in a standard format. This document would get referred to even when the original designer would have left and graduated from college. This documentation over the years evolved as a principal source of reference for further satellite development. In addition to this scrupulous documentation, we would induct individuals who were not just talented, but also determined to brave the challenges of the space missions. We would enlighten these individuals about the current satellite systems and empower them to extend the functionality and complete the satellite. With this approach, we ensured that the development of satellite continued as batches of students passed by and graduated from college. <laughs> what started out as a crazy idea transformed itself into a vision, a vision to reach out to the space, a vision that was transpired from one generation of students or one batch of students to the next batch until the original idea was realized, long after the ideator had left and graduated from college. This is the part of the idea. So that reminds me that I told you about the launch of our satellite before, but that was not the end of the story. We still had to receive a signal from Swayam to ascertain the success of our mission. It would be about an hour after the launch when the satellite would pass through our ground station. We were all gathered at the ground station for the moment of truth had arrived. Our years of sweat and toil could take Swayam up in space. But were we good enough to hear back from it? We did not know. Time had come to a still in anticipation of a signal from Swayam. We could sense our heartbeats rising as each moment passed by. We were eagerly awaiting a signal from Swayam. And that's when it happened. The transceiver buzzed with a familiar sound. This was the sweetest sound of our life. It was Swayam waving back at its creators. Our long-cherished dream was finally a reality. Thank you. <laughs>